everybody, Josh from Silka here, uh, coming at you to talk about the four ounce chain stripper and super secret chain wax uh, starter pack. So we launched this a couple weeks ago. Wow, the feedback has been amazing. Um, but there have also been a ton of questions. Uh, so we're gonna answer a couple of those here for you today. As a reminder, I'm sure I'm not answering all your questions. Please be sure to put your questions uh, down in the comments below. That really does help us uh, give, or give us guidance on topics uh, to cover and things we, we make sure we focus on when we do these, uh, these how-to videos. So, uh, chain stripper, right, we talked about is a simple one-step, uh, ideally, chains off the bike, you're putting it in, you know, your ball jar or a, a mason jar, uh, old water bottle, covering it, shake it up, let it sit 10 minutes, shake it again, pull it out, rinse it in water, chain is stripped. I completely get not everybody wants to take the chain off the bike uh, and not everybody's willing to, to put that time into it. It it's, can be a pain, especially as somebody who's into older bikes. Uh, you know, the majority of my bikes are still like six, seven and eight speed uh, chains, old campy groupos where you've got to re-rivet and peen the chain back together. Um, you know, I'm gonna be honest, I don't do that with any of those. So uh, for that, uh, we're gonna use chain stripper in the drip bottle. Now, how good is it compared to the submersion uh, technique? It's probably somewhere in the 92, 95% is good range, maybe 90%, depending on, on how you use it, how long you let it sit. Um, you know, there's just no way physically that we can match true immersion. Uh, it's a little bit like with the drip wax versus the immersive hot waxing, right? You just can't match. Uh, fully soaking the thing in there, but this really comes darn close. Um, so how to use it, uh, really it is gonna be just like we teach the application of the super secret. You wanna put the bike uh, in sort of a cross chain, uh, you know, second or third cog down from the top in the big ring if you've got one. Um, and that is gonna allow us, we talk about you've got the, the chain cassette and chain ring are, are uh, parallel. And when you skew this way, the chain now has to bend, come across, and then has to articulate laterally uh, to get back onto that uh, cassette cog right here. And what that does is it forces that parallel gap to open into a little bit of a triangle and then go straight again. And so you almost get like a little pumping action um, as the chain articulates laterally right in this zone. And then once the, the lubricant or the chain stripper is in there, it's now articulating this way around the pin, straight to curved or to articulated, back to straight, articulates again, straightens again, articulates again, straightens again. It's a whole lot going on right in that little, uh, that little area. So you can take your chain stripper, uh, give it a little shake, um, you know, make sure it's, it's kind of an interesting product. You shake it and you can kind of see almost like uh, a little like, almost like legs on a wine glass kind of like moving around in there. So just uh, give it a shake to homogenize it a bit. And then you're gonna wanna, I always kind of steady myself on the spokes and you're gonna wanna apply those drops right here, right as the chain is articulating onto the cog and I'll do it while backpedaling. And I'm gonna save you the backpedaling because I know Michelle has the headphones on as she's filming this and she gets the like backpedal mega thing on my microphone right here. Um, I would do it here, but what you can't see is that uh, our studio, to keep the echo down, I'm actually standing on some really deep pile shag carpet. Um, and so things like uh, stripping chains or <laughs> and using lubricants, uh, you know, I don't want that in my carpet. You shouldn't either. So we're gonna cut some B-roll together showing you what this looks like uh, when we take it outside. And, uh, well, actually, let's just, let's just throw the B-roll up here. Um, Okay, so here's what it looks like. We're dripping it on. Uh, you know, you can see we're putting it in that spot. And, and the key here is you want to get it in and then you want to let it soak for 10 minutes. So we're going to one drop per link, just like you're seeing. And we're backpedaling the whole way. You're going to maybe backpedal three, four times after it's all been dripped on. And then you want to set your stopwatch and give it at least 10 minutes. Um, and then you're going to come back and you're going to do it again. And that second one is really gonna help flush out the stuff that's in there from the first one. I'd let that sit a couple minutes while you backpedal. And then we're gonna go at it with, uh, with water, essentially. Uh, no need for a pressure washer or anything like that. Just water from the hose will do it. Um, you know, essentially spray it in there. That is gonna take, you know, all the, the stripper is lifting and encapsulating 
all that grease, right? So it's essentially surrounding it in a uh, surfactant, which is actually a, a pretty darn good lubricant in and of itself, but it's surrounding it in a surfactant, um, which allows it to very easily slip out of the chain uh, with the water that you're spraying on. So there you go, we've sprayed it. Um, you know, I'd bounce the back of the bicycle a couple times, let it start to dry out. If you have compressed air, uh, it's great to run compressed air in there. I'd let the chain dry mostly, if not all the way, and then we're gonna go ahead and apply our super secret chain lube. Uh, it has been mentioned uh, in a couple of comments in previous videos that you know, sometimes the super secret doesn't wanna stick to the chain, it wants to you know, run out or drip everywhere, or it, it's too liquidy, I think is the what, what people tend to say. And um, if that is your case, you need to shake it, like really shake it. Um, you know, it is an emulsification. Uh, it, it, extreme temperatures and extreme time can cause it to sort of separate. Uh, so you wanna give it a really nice shake. If it has gotten too cold, it also can sort of congeal into an almost solid uh, and if that is the case for you, you can actually put it into hot water, about 150 Fahrenheit um, water for a few minutes and then shake it uh, and it will bring it back to life. Uh, a, a common technique with that one too is if you have a little like a quarter inch nut, um, you know, open the top, drop the little steel nut in there and then shake it using that as an agitator. Um, you know, you don't, you don't need that typically if, if the lube is still in good shape. And I would recommend don't use a ball bearing because when you then go to use the lube, the ball bearing is typically the perfect thing to plug up the orifice at the top of the bottle. Uh, and so you're gonna go from one problem of having it not pouring because it's congealed to another problem of having it not pour because you've got a ball bearing plugging up the, uh, the tip. That's why we recommend the nut. So there you have it. I mean, it's really that simple. Drip it on, let it sit 10 minutes, uh, do it again, couple of minutes, hose it, done. The other piece of that question that we're getting a lot of is, can I use one of those plastic clamshell chain cleaning devices, you know, the things that you kind of like clamshell over the chain and then run the drivetrain backward and there's brushes and gears and things in there. Absolutely, uh, the product works really well in a chain cleaner like that. And I would even add one of the things you can do uh, because those tend to take more liquid than is really required to actually strip the chain. And so I'd come back to either my ball jar or if you have a funnel, um, you could use like a coffee filter and pour the lubricant from the plastic chain cleaning device through a coffee filter to strain it back either into the original bottle uh, or into a jar, something like this. Make sure you label it nicely so that you, uh, you know, not tempted to drink it later, as we have also learned in the comments, some people are prone to do. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Really pretty simple stuff. Uh, fully stripped chain in like 10 minutes. It's pretty awesome. Again, please leave your comments. We love hearing from you. Um, yeah, we'll see you next time.